my name is Andrew Hollinger, and at the time of this recording, I'm at the end of my first year as a PhD student. And I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Michael J. Ferris. I've been lucky to have him as a teacher, and again lucky to have sat with him for about an hour as I prepared this introduction video for you. So you're watching this, maybe a new or prospective student, and you're thinking, who is Dr. Ferris, and when should I take him? Well, let's jump into that. I think a good place to start is his teaching philosophy. I'd distill his philosophy down into content and practice. I think that's how Dr. Ferris approaches his classes. He's got an approach where you learn and then you do. So if you, if, if you uh, approach something in class, uh, something like a makerspace, or sound writing, or um, even the rhetoric of public spaces, then you're probably going to have to make something, put together a podcast, or even geocache. So then, what does it take to make the grade? I think for Dr. Ferris, it's all about caring for. Caring for your work. His will be a class of reading and writing. And it's, it's not so much that he's looking for you to be right, as much as he wants you to be thoughtful. It's not an easy class. His is not an easy class. But I don't think it's a fry your brain class either. It's challenging. Just about everything else you'll need to know about Dr. Ferris can be found on this website that I put together. You can find the link in the notes that accompany this video or simply go to andrewhollinger.com I'm sorry, andrewhollinger.wixsite.com slash Michael J. Ferris. Let me walk you through the site. The site is mobile friendly, but works better in a browser. So we start here with the splash page. And the two things that I am most reminded of when I consider Dr. Ferris, pedagogy, and practice. I think he is a serious and reflective teacher and a serious and reflective scholar. Next, I have an edited version of our interview as a podcast episode available for you to listen to. This actually is an homage to Dr. Ferris. I took rhetoric of new media with him, and one of the projects was to create a podcast, a skill I feel like I've added to my own repertoire. Here, I've got some pull quotes from our interview. About pedagogy, he says, Ultimately, I think our scholarship should contribute in some way to making the world a better place. And I think pedagogy does that by hopefully creating either conversations or environments where learning or better writing is going to happen. In my experience inside Dr. Ferris's classes, there's a whole bunch of talking and writing about new ideas. Um, some ideas feel deceptively simple. Uh, I, I remember we were talking about just the rhetoric of public spaces. Um, and we were, as a class, able to complicate that idea uh, and make it not simple, um, but exciting and interesting. Uh, and, and, and part of, I think, being in Dr. Ferris's class is about complicating things in productive ways. I don't mean to make things hard to understand. <clears throat> but as, as a field, sometimes we get in the habit of presenting things very cleanly, <clears throat> as, as though they are only truth. Uh, and, and in his class, things get complex and interesting, fascinating. Um, and there is definitely a lot of thinking, talking, and writing. 
about praxis, Dr. Ferris says. We also need to think about the embodiedness of practice and how practices are physical and repetitious and learned through habits. So I view myself as having a so social epistemic epistemology that is also situated in bodiness. And part of what that means is that in Dr. Ferris's own research and own approach to pedagogy, his, his classes and his scholarship, he wants to think about how our theories and how our ideas figure into the physical world in which we live. So if you have an iPad, what does that mean for your academic life? What does it mean for your pop culture uh, life? What does it mean um, for your entertaining? Um, and so he, he, he likes to think about <clears throat> what do, the, do our theories matter in the physical, actual, real world. About care. He says, I think both curiosity and care need to drive research. By care, I mean caring for something, not just caring about it. A project takes care, caring for participants, caring for the subject, caring for the context, caring for the language. Caring for is work, whereas caring about can just be an attachment that doesn't necessarily lead to the work necessary for a project to flourish. I asked Dr. Ferris in our interview <clears throat> if he had advice for new students, what, what would he say? Uh, and he said to read, especially if you're in your first year. Read broadly, read deeply, uh, get a sense of the field, of the scope, of the history, of its direction. And then a little bit later in our interview, he said, I know I said the reading thing, but also care. <clears throat> and, and not just... Not just to, to show me that you have a passion, but to put that passion into practice. Remember, pedagogy and practice, right? He wants to see you work for your, for, put, to kind of put the effort in. He, he wants to see you do good work. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the things that you make are in themselves good. And I know this, this is something even I uh, had to work through. But the work leading up to a project that isn't all that great, the work itself can be something something good, something cared for. And so I think if you're going to be in Dr. Ferris's class, one of the things you need to do is think about what it is you're putting into the class. Uh, it's definitely a class you have to show up for. And finally, I asked Dr. Ferris, I asked him, <clears throat> what thing, because he's all about materiality, what thing captures your materiality, what could be your avatar? And he said, I'd go with a cup of coffee. No cream or sugar, just black coffee. It can be reinvigorating. It can be a necessity if you're addicted like me. It's my go-to object for most of the work I do. It's a driving force behind the development of the public sphere. English and French folks gathering in cafes to discuss affairs and write newspapers. And it continues to be a site of interesting public spaces. So, maybe grab them a Starbucks on the way to class. <clears throat> Next on the site, I've got just a few pictures um, from his own actual life. You'll see his cup of coffee in his computer, uh, some little bits, books that he was working on, an Arduino kit, podcast, and then a... Uh, a techni uh, technical diagram of his favorite stereoscopic mic. And finally, I asked Dr. Ferris to sum up his research as a, as a hashtag, and he gave me digital materiality. Dr. Ferris is a curious person, interested in many things, too many things, he told me. But the best synopsis, the best capture of his research is hashtag digital materiality, an investigation of the spaces, agents, ecologies of our technical and digital environments. The work takes him down lines of inquiry that include iPads and the classroom, 
sound writing, maker spaces, and even geocaching. My recommendation, take Dr. Ferris's class when it comes up. I think you'll be glad you did.